Welcome to another episode of Community Battlecast Primetime. I'm your host, Doom Tanker, and in this episode, we've got everything you love and something extra for you guys. So, let's get into it. Did you get your beta access for our Tiberium Alliance on the official Facebook? No? Well, if you got the coin for it, IGN Prime members now have access to the closed beta with their accounts. If you don't want to get it just for the TA beta, you can also get access to other betas and free swag too. You can head on over to IGN's website for more details. If you haven't played Renegade X Black Dawn yet, and if not, you should, there's also an LP of the entire campaign on YouTube. So if you're not sure about it or if you want to see it in action first before grabbing up the 4 gig download, you can check it out on YouTube. Episode 2 of Renegade X Community Q&A session has been posted up on YouTube. Always nice to see what these guys have in store for the title, as well as the upcoming multiplayer release. An interview with Phenomic Studios, the guys behind the upcoming Tiberium Alliance browser game, has also been posted up on CNCNZ. You can read the full article up on their website now. On a sadder note though, Michael Cruel, former programmer and member of the CNC team at EA, who moved to Insomniac, died February 16th. The gameplay programmer was involved in a motorcycle accident. He was 32. Insomniac has closed down their site in a tribute to Michael. Our hearts and prayers go out to his family and friends. Now it's time for the Mod Spotlight. First up in the Mod Spotlight is an exclusive interview with the RA3 Paradox team and their upcoming mini mod titled Apocalypse, which features fast-paced RTS action set in the Vietnam War. Hey everyone, it's Nod Soldier Girl, back for the Red Alert 3 Paradox interview. Let's get the questions rolling. Tell us about the Paradox team. How'd you guys first come together? Well, Paradox started with, we were actually at a um, LAN cafe, me and a bunch of friends, and we were playing Red Alert 3, and, and we got on a topic of like, you know, where do we go from here? Like, where can the series go after adding the insanity of, you know, this, this sort of anime Japan faction? We were thinking about it. We came up with a couple of good ones. We came up with the, the sort of American revolutionary thing. We came up with uh, sort of like pulp sci-fi um, China, and it sort of snowballed from there. And uh, people have quit and joined. And we've come up with a lot of good stuff as a result of it. What inspired the Apocalypse Mini mod? It started mostly because we realized after we put out an open beta, and we sort of desperately scrambled to keep up with it and to keep up with the balance and bug fixing. And we realized about partway through that we actually don't know what we're doing. So we thought maybe we should step back from this sort of larger project of 150 new units and uh, you know trying to keep everything together with that and we should learn in an environment of a couple dozen units at most. So we started this apocalypse thing sort of, it's threefold because first off, it's the setting really establishes sort of the 1960s world that we've created. It really gets people involved in that idea. It's a smaller, sort of more reasonable setting for us to work with. What kind of Viet Cong units will we see? Well, there's a lot of really interesting units that we have planned for you guys and we all think you're going to like it. For example, we have the Viet Cong Gorilla, which is my personal favorite, where basically it is always stealth. It plants bombs on enemy structures, units, the ground, really anything you want except infantry. As a secondary, it can place mines, which is always very nice. And for the Arban Rangers, we have the Peacock Tank Destroyer, which looks as hilarious as the name suggests. It's basically just a chassis with six anti-tank guns mounted onto the top of the thing. What comes after the Apocalypse Mini mod is finished? I'm basically working on Release 1 assets while these guys are finishing Apocalypse. Sketch briefly mentioned the other mini mods we've, been, we've released years ago. I mean, those things work, as in they are playable, but they don't really look that good. Lasers shoot stuff, buildings build, they work, but we could do better, so I'm reskinning some of our really old allied assets as well as working on the new GLA sub-faction and a couple of new map theaters which will hopefully be changing your game. The Apocalypse Mini mod is looking close to completion. Roughly how much is left? We're basically just balancing now. We're um, making sure that there's no serious exploits, making sure that bugs aren't too bad, and we're also just cleaning up some of the effects stuff, making sure that all the new tracers are in, all the effects look really good when they happen, all the protocols look really nice. Uh, this is basically our chance to put out something that looks professional as well as plays professional, so we're doing our best at that. We heard something about a mod wiki. What can you tell us about this? Well, the wiki started out a while back as a way to basically collect all the ideas so that way people don't forget about because there's a lot of stuff in Paradox. We have the eight major factions and the eight minor factions all showcased on the wiki. We have detailed unit pages for not only the vanilla Relic Free faction, but also for Paradox factions. So you can be exploring old favorites like the Attack Dog and such like that. Or you can be looking at the Talon Craftsman or any of the Chinese turrets. Basically, it's just a compendium of anything Paradox. 
one of the things that we do do with it is that we have this thing we're doing with the stats. We have little boxes containing all the stats for all the units in the actual in-game values, as well as just like a rundown on all the ar different armor types and something called special tags, which is a way of sort of showing the passive and active abilities of a uh, particular unit in very simple language. A little bit inspired by Dungeons and Dragons monster manual entries, so you can quickly look at a Riptide article and see, oh, it's amphibious, or you look at the Peacekeeper and you know immediately that he's immune to tear gas. There's so many units that it's impossible to keep that information in game, like, right away and make it too intuitive. So, this is just a quick way to learn each unit's abilities without having to experiment. You guys are really changing the game with the Apocalypse Mini mod. What are you doing to keep it balanced? Pretty much where as vanilla Red Alert 3 was based around each unit has a unique health, sort of unique armor types and firepower. In Apocalypse and Paradox, everything is just centered around the armor types and the weapon types. Every single unit has exactly 100 points of health, so pretty much everything is derived about that unit's armor, which makes the balance system much more realistic and means you'll need to think more, because everything has, a, has more broad counters than it did in Red Alert 3. What can you tell us about the factions? Uh, Apocalypse is based around two factions and two reinforcement factions for each one. The Arvin, the Army of the Republic of South Vietnam, uh, they're rangers, and the Viet Cong. The reason we pick these two is instead of doing the North directly and doing like, you know, the Allies or the American forces, we wanted to sort of introduce people to something a little bit new. Like, the Arvin aren't really well known outside of people who actually study Vietnam because, you know, all the media about Vietnam is mostly about the American Army. So we decided to focus on, you know, the real life forces that fought most of that war. The reinforcement factions you get when you capture a certain flag and guys come on board. So you have the North Vietnamese army and you have allied peacekeepers. Each faction is based around sort of countering one another. The Arvin are very good at counterinsurgency, uh, detecting hidden enemies, burning them out of uh, garrisons, stuff like that. And the Viet Cong are very fast and good at hiding. They have uh, lots of stealth abilities and stuff like that. Each of the reinforcements complement that. The allies are extremely powerful, so once the Arvin find where the Viet Cong are hiding, the allies can take them out. And the North Vietnamese are very good at frontal assault, so once the Arvin are strung out, the North Vietnamese can take out their forces with tanks and waves of infantry. Anything you'd like to let the people know about if they want to follow the mod? Well, there's always the Wick. That's pretty much the one-stop shop for anything and everything Paradox. Another little known thing, however, is a Paradox cast on usually Sundays at GMT minus 5 at 8 o'clock. Basically, there we talk about the mod, do suggestions, answer some questions, and basically go nuts. We do, uh, we do games, we do the suggestions on the wiki, we have suggestion pages that people can suggest unit ideas or fun uh, functions, and then we make fun of them. We do uh, news, and every once in a while we run something called War Factory, which is instead of talking, we just have music and we show the process of putting a new unit in the game. Another thing you can do is follow us on moddb at moddb.com forward slash members forward slash open sketchbook or sign outs. We'll both be posting Paradox and other such stuff before they appear on the main moddb page. Sometimes it could be even more Ahead, so be sure to check us out. Blue Hell Productions has given us a battlefield update on Apocalypse Rising. You can check out all the details on their official website or on their mod database page. Tiberium Crystal Wars has recently released a newest beta on IndieDB. You can grab version 1.30 beta on their official page now. Command & Conquer Untitled has just revealed some new units they're working on for the mod. New fighters and tanks. Awesome stuff. You can snatch up this mod on their mod database page. Rise of the Reds has also revealed some new unit updates for the GLA in this mod. Check out the revamped Scud Storm, Scorpion Tank, and GLA Mobile Command Center. This mod just keeps getting more and more awesome. Awesome. Go grab it now, comrades! Advance Wars Frontline has added an update at the end of last month showing off the new naval units for the five armies. Head on over to their mod database page now and see it for yourself. Look at that! It's time for the Battlecast 5 once again, and this time it's really special. And you'll find out why in just a moment. Our first replay is from Contra, an awesome mod for General Zero Hour. It features Josh Rocks 134 as the Blue Chinese Infantry General on the top, and Hybrid as the Red GLA Toxin General on the bottom. The map is Silent River. Both players start off with a heavy macro style, each taking expansions and setting up lots of defense. Oh yeah, Static D. Hybrid manages to take and hold the center, which gives him strategic positioning as well as access to an oil derrick for additional funds, an oil refinery for cheaper vehicle production, and a reinforcement pad that gives you free units. Which, I don't know if you know this, but free units are pretty good in many situations. Josh's howitzers and hybrids mortars face off in one area, while dragon tanks and poisoners fight in another area. Both sides reinforce until the battle ends in a near-perfect stalemate.
Hybrid begins massing forces around the map while sending stealth bomb trucks into Josh's base. The first round of bomb trucks detonate. Shortly thereafter, Hybrid starts sending in more trucks, as well as capturing some of Josh's dozers and building an additional base inside of Josh's defenses. Josh eventually leaves the game in the face of defeat. The next match is a Team Alias replay from Tiberium Wars. We have Ipone U as Green and Cabal as Red in this Scrin Mirror matchup on Small Town USA. Cabal goes for an early expansion with an Explorer while Ipone U masses Seekers and sends them to Cabal's main. Cabal starts pumping out Disintegrators to compensate. It's enough to push the Seekers out and Ipone U reverse moves them across the the map. The Seekers end up in Cabal's expansion and they meet Cabal's army. Iphone U quickly expands there as well, and an epic battle ensues, which needs no narration. In the end, Cabal wins out and Ipone U sells off all their buildings. Game 3 takes us to Vietnam in the mini mod Apocalypse. The map is Lost in the Flood, and we have Protroid as the Red Viet Cong in the top right and Proud American as the Yellow Arvin in the bottom left. Both players start out by capturing a control point. Control points give them increased income, access to better units, support powers, and eventually reinforcements. Protroid tries to gain an early lead by capturing an additional control point, followed by capturing American's control point. American strikes back by capturing two of Protroid's flags, while Protroid captures the map's fourth control point. American brings the fight to Protroid's door with peacekeepers, but Protroid has mines and an overwhelming amount of reinforcement infantry. Protroid moves into the middle of the map and sets up more mines. American's peacekeepers walk into the mines and they get stuck in a choke. American's forces do a fair amount of damage, but in the end, Protroid's numbers and his snipers win out the day. We're still in Apocalypse, but this time on the map, GOOD MORNING VIETNAM! with Open Sketchbook as the Pink Arvin in the bottom right and Protroid once again as the Viet Cong, but green this time. Sketch opts to send his first infantry to capture the farthest control points first and is able to capture four control points to Protroid's two control points. Protroid quickly captures two of the points from Sketch and sets up camo netting near the easternmost point to hide his units. Sketch builds a Blue Jay transport helicopter so he can quickly capture points and move on. However, Protroid's tunnels allow his army to get close to Sketch's base. Protroid messes up an army and steamrolls Sketch's base. Moving on to the final game and the third Apocalypse replay, we have Synapse playing as the Red Arvin in the bottom right and Open Sketchbook as the Green Viet Cong in the top left. The map is once again Good Morning Vietnam. Both players claim three control points and Sketch sets up defenses around the westernmost point only to have it captured by Synapse. Sketch builds tunnel networks to help the mobility of his units, as well as getting mortar teams to bombard Synapse from afar. Synapse uses helicopters to strike against Sketch's forces. Both players group up small armies and head for each other's bases. Synapse gets to Sketch's bases first and is able to win the game. If you're interested in watching full game casts, then head over to youtube.com slash CNC Cyber, where I'll be mostly posting CNC games. Now it's time for community fan art. Now that Soldier Girl and I have been scanning the web for another wave of fan art for you guys. Soviet Hybrid has created a cover for a tabletop war game version of Command & Conquer. Cool stuff. Wonder how it actually plays. SOS101 has built this awesome mammoth tank out of Legos. This is pretty awesome. Wish I could have built something like this when I was a kid. Private Dan has done a couple iPod parodies featuring Tanya and Yuriko. Funny stuff. Poon Poon Chu has brought us this anime inspired version of the ladies of RA3 in this amazing piece. Kay Nash has created the next version of the Kirov airship in this awesome piece. Counselor has rendered this amazing Tiberium Twilight poster. Now if the real TT was like this. Next one comes from Master of Ra and this hand drawn picture of a mammoth Mark II. Pretty nice. Black Lotus is trying to infiltrate our base with this sweet looking piece by Kansa One. I probably said that wrong. This awesome Nod wallpaper comes from Emperor Russ. Perfect for all you black hand soldiers out there. And that wraps up another episode of Community Battlecast Prime Time. If you may have noticed, it's been about a month since our last episode. Every time we got some big news to share with you guys, it'll be about a month in between episodes. But the episode will be longer and feature more special segments and compensate for the wait. Until the next big episode, we'll resume our normal bi-weekly schedule. And as always, if you have fan art, news, or anything Command & Conquer related you want to share with the community, feel free to reach Nod Soldier Girl at her email, Nod Soldier girl at hotmail.com leave comments and questions on the forums or in the comments section below and we'll see you guys on the battlefield